This video will explain how to calculate pore pressure using flow nets. And we're going to look at this example when we have a dam here and we have uh, two water levels, uh, upper and lower water levels, and we have a water seepage underneath the dam. And we're already given flow net. What we need to find is the pore temperature point A. Um, to find the pore water pressure at point A, we'll just follow this procedure, which is given below here. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is uh, define the datum. So datum is a reference line so that we can estimate the elevation head, total head and pressure head. Uh, to find the pore water pressure, we uh, need to find the pressure head. And when we find pressure head, we just multiply it by a unit weight of uh, water, and that will give us uh, water pressure. To find uh, pressure head, we're going to use this relation between total head, which is equal uh, pressure head plus elevation head. And from here, we know that uh, pressure head is equal total head minus elevation head. So let's first find the um, um, total head for uh, the whole flow net that will cause water flow from the left uh, to the right. Uh, to do that, we need to find two water levels and just take the difference between them. So this is the first water level, this is the second one. So the difference is 18 meters. So now we're going to define the datum. And my tip is uh, always use uh, the lowest water level. Uh, it will make uh, your calculations much easier. So in this case, this is uh, the lowest water level and this is going to be datum. So um, next point is uh, we need to find the elevation height for point A. And we know that this distance uh, from the datum to point A so this is the datum line. This distance uh, to point A, it's uh, 11 meters. And uh, because it's below the datum, uh, we're going to write down that elevation head. It's uh, minus 11 meters. So next step is we need to define the total head loss for each equipotential drop. The idea is that here, before water starts flowing through flow net, uh, we have maximum um, difference in total heads, which is uh, 18 meters. And then water is going to flow underneath the structure. And when it comes here to the surface, at this point, uh, this uh, total head will be equal to zero. So which means that as water flows through each of these drops here, it's going to lose a certain amount of total head. And this is what we call delta H. So um, the way we uh, design these flow nets, we say that for each flow net, um, there will be uh, the same decrease in total head. And the way we do it, we say that delta H, it will be uh, this uh, maximum H divided by number of drops. So we just uh, evenly distributed through the whole flow net. So now we need to find this number of drops. And what we just going to do, we will use um, the flow channel in, uh, in the middle and then just count number of drops in it. So we'll do it together. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have a number of drops equal nine. And now we can calculate delta H, which is um, loss of um, total head for each uh, equipotential drop. It will be uh, um, total head maximum 18 and divide by number of drops will be two minus. So this means that when water flows through one equipotential drop, is going to the total head is going to decrease by two meters. So now let's look at uh, point uh, A and point is here. 
and then uh, let's count uh, how many drops uh, it will take for water to flow from the here where the flow net um, flow begins to point A and we'll see that it will take two full drops. So it's going to take two full drops which means that the um, total head loss will be uh, delta H times two drops. And we know that for each drop um, is going to be decreased by two meters, two times two equal four meters. Okay, uh, what does it mean? It means that at point A, uh, water would flow through two equipotential drops and uh, the total head, which is maximum 18, will uh, decrease by four meters, which means that the total head at point uh, A will be maximum, which is 18, minus um, delta H times uh, two drops. So it's uh, 18 minus uh, four, 14 minus. Okay, so now we found the total head and uh, we can find pressure head it's uh, total head at point A, so everything at point A here, minus uh, elevation head at point A. So we know that the total head at point A will be 14 meters minus, and the elevation head is negative 11. It will give us positive 25 meters. So the pressure head at point A is 25 meters, now we can find pull water pressure by multiplying the pressure head by unit weight of water. And we're going to have a pressure head times unit weight of water, which is uh, 25 times 9.81 will give us approximately uh, 245.3 kilonewtons per square meters. So this is going to be the pull water pressure at point A.